really wonderful because I don't get applause from my own students. So thank you very much. This afternoon I want um, to get, take you on a journey. I want you to come on a journey with me. I want you to think about marketing communication and how it might ally with strategic communication. We know that there's a difference between strategic communication and marketing communication. If you've been in the two previous talks um, that I gave here at RSU, you will, you will recall that at times I talked about that difference and I talked about a market environment and a non-market environment. Marketing communication is really about selling products. It's about the bottom line uh, that an organisation that trades products um, generating sales, if you like. That's why integrated marketing communication involves advertising, sales, sales promotion. It involves um, uh, direct selling, personal selling, and elements of public relations. Strategic communication, on the other hand, is about the big picture, big picture issues that organisations face in their mid to long term environments, when they think about what issues might I have to face in the next five years, in the next ten years. And that's the essential difference. Strategic communication doesn't directly affect what happens in the market. But if the issues that strategic communication deals with are not resolved, then they will have an impact uh, on the market. Uh, of an organisation's market. And that's the essential difference between them. And I want, I want you to think about that as we go through this afternoon because I'm going to be talking a lot about strategic issues identification and how we might handle strategic issues. But there are so many similarities in identifying marketing issues, marketing communication issues, and the way in which we would go about identifying strategic communication issues. And that's why I want you to come on the journey. I want you to listen to what I'm saying and make the link between what I'm talking about with issues communication and how you might apply that and the principles I talk about uh, to marketing communication. So I want to argue with you this afternoon that the basic principles of issues communication and marketing communication mirror one another. And I mean that primary task that we have to do as communicators, identify the things we need to address. A new product, people don't know about that product. A proposal that something might happen in an organisation's environment five years down the track needs us to think about how we're going to deal with it. And so what I'm doing this afternoon is attempting to build on the last two talks, attempting to bring them together. And I want to make today a connection between issues identification and analysis and all those aspects of professional communication. Because, whoops, I've pressed too many buttons. Um, because no matter what discipline, professional discipline we're working in, 
we have to do pretty much the same things. The sexy things we do, the tactics, will differ. You know, it's really exciting for students to be studying advertising because they can make all those u butte television ads. You don't get to do those u butte things if you're um, working in public relations. You get to do stuff that's a bit, um, a bit more serious, if you like. So here's a thought. That organisational issues depend on the situation that the organisation faces and can be addressed in two ways. Either through marketing communication, especially if we're dealing with product selling, or by strategic issues communication, where there's an issue that might involve regulation, the, new, the government's rules uh, for something. Van Riel and Fromben tell us, and we talked about this um, the other day, tell us that communication is the lifeblood of all organisations. And why might that be so? Well, communication is about sourcing raw materials for an organisation. It's about identifying market needs. It's about selling products. It's also about identifying organisational issues, either those issues that apply in the marketplace or occur in the marketplace, or those that occur in a longer time frame. And communication is about dealing with mid to long term issues. And a common task, whether we're marketing communicators or whether we're strategic communicators, is to identify a bunch of issues um, that apply uh, to our organisation in a given situation. And when we've done that, we're about developing a communication strategy, whether it's a marketing strategy, a public relations strategy, a Marcom strategy, a sales strategy, a public relations strategy, or an issues communication strategy, we follow some pretty basic principles. First of all, we identify and analyse the situation. We identify goals and objectives. We identify target publics, markets, audiences, and the messages we need to give them. In a Stratcom sense, the messages are about arguments, really, and we'll see a flavour of that as we go through. In a marketing communication sense, the messages are about, hey, this product is fantastic. Buy six of them right now from our organisation, and it's so fantastic you need to buy six products every six months. That's that trying to generate through marketing communication repeat sales. That's where that notion comes from. And in doing all of this, we're concerned about organisational issues. And what a strategy is trying to do, whether it is a marketing communication strategy or whether it is a strategic communication strategy, is to, whoops, is to take an issue, the lack of sales of our new product because people don't know about it, or addressing a decline in sales, or addressing an issue say about the natural environment that might be going to impact on our organisation. So we take an issue which exists in an organisational environment and we're thinking about the situation as it is right now when we start to deal with the issue and we develop a strategy which takes us to a point that we want to be at. That's the change we want to make. We want people to buy our product. We want people to understand our point of view uh, on a strategic issue. And in the last couple of days I've talked about this slide, which attempts to define, using Bark and Allen, um, who are American scholars, their view of what an organisation's external environment looks like. They say it comprises two external environments. The market environment where we sell products, where we compete with people, where we deal with our suppliers. And those of you doing marketing communication, particularly when you need the theory of marketing communication, you can see how important it is to maintain relationships with those people. For the strategic communicators, we're thinking about the non-market environment, where debates occur um, about regulation, about tax, about what citizens are raising as issues, what activists are raising as issues. And it's in this environment that the media 
national, the, the mass news media is reporting about those issues. It's reporting about your organisation and how it deals with those issues. It's reporting about your industry. It's reporting about how all of those organised, all of those people in the non-market environment um, and what they're saying. And here again is the difference between strategic communication, strategic issues communication and marketing communication. The centre one, the market environment, is about selling products. It's about resourcing the manufacturer of products. It's about competing with other organisations who produce um, the products. Now the non-market environment is important for the marketing environment because if an issue is not resolved in that mid to long term period, an issue that occurs in the non-market environment, it could have an impact on the market environment. You think about, for example, an organisation's reputation being trashed because it produced dodgy products. You can't fix that kind of bad reputation overnight. You can't just run an ad or a sales campaign and fix it. It takes a long time to fix it. And if we don't fix it, in, by the midterm, people are going to stop buying our products because they continue to think they're dodgy. That's the point about how issues that occur in the non-market environment can, if they're not addressed, impact on the market environment. So I want to now just talk about the principles of issues management. This is much more um, to do with strategic issues communication than it is with marketing communication. But if you've been with me so far, and I haven't offended you so far, you'll start to see how the way in which issues in the mid to long term are addressed have an in, has an impact uh, on the way in which marketing communication issues are addressed. And you can see the analysis of issues applying in a marketing context. So Van Riel and Fromben say that the principal things that happen in, in, in issues management are these. We need to detect issues that might be a potential threat and do it early. We need to get our internal resources and forces organised so that we can understand what that issue is and prepare to address it. And we need to implement an issues management strategy to react to that issue uh, as soon as necessary. Think about those three points in terms of marketing communication. Early detection of an issue that can be a potential threat. Think about Toyota, for example, when it recalls it's Toyota Land Cruiser because it's got a problem with the brakes. That's a potential threat. From a marketing communication perspective, what would you do about it? You'd run some ads advising customers that their Land Cruiser was going to be recalled so we could fix the issue. Same kind of thing that would happen in strategic communication. Marshalling internal resources and forces, getting ready to do the advertising, to do the sales stuff to do the sales promotion stuff, to do some direct selling. And finally, um, reacting to that issue as quickly as we can. So issues are about an organisation's credibility, its reputation and the values that it holds and the values that it wants its customers and its competitors and its suppliers and the regulators and all of the other people who have an interest, its stakeholders, who have an interest in the organisation, that they want them to know and to understand. Heath and Palanchar say that, Heath and Palanchar are American um, writers about strategic issues management. They say that an, that an issue is a contestable thing. It's where people have arguments, two sides to an argument. And something becomes an issue because you disagree with what I'm saying or I disagree with what you're saying. And so there's a contestable uh, point there. And it could be about a fact. It could be about a value that our organisation has. It could be about a policy, usually a public policy. Um, and, an, and they say that the resolution of these contestable points has consequences for the organisation's strategic plan 
and its future success or failure. That's true of issues that you need to deal with in marketing communication, isn't it? If you can't sell a product through marketing communication, the organisation's going to be damaged. It'll go broke, it'll lose money. Heath and Palanchar also tell us that debates about issues are routine. We all debate issues. Inside organisations, issues are debated. In the marketing department, somebody says we're going to do this in order to sell this new product and somebody else says no, we're not, we're going to do it this way because this way is better. That's, a, that's being contested, the point of view about how things happen. And that's true about excuse me, about the external environment when you're debating an issue. Tony Jakes, who's an Australian, says that not every issue is strategic, but that you should manage all issues in a strategic way. In an issues communication sense, that's absolutely a rule. In a marketing communication sense, it's also a rule, because you don't just run an ad for this week if you're trying to launch a new product or well, you don't engage in a direct selling campaign just for two days if you're trying to sell a new product. You have a strategic approach. You've got to introduce it to the market. You have to, you have to then explain to people what it is and how it works and why it works. I'll give you an example. Ford car manufacturers are closing down their car manufacturing in Australia. We're still getting um, car ads about Ford cars and Ford trucks and Ford off-road vehicles and so on. But Ford's also started to introduce a little teasing campaign about its future. And the imagery of that campaign is a lot simpler. It's got a lot of black and white in it, white text over black. It's talking about, I can't remember the exact words, but it's talking about we're changing, we're going to be new. And they start to introduce in that ad that they're running on television, new cars. The classic Ford Mustang is coming to Australia in a couple of years time, next year I think. Um, and so that appears in this ad that Ford's running um, about how it's changing. And that's a strategic approach. It's teasing us to think about who is this new company? Who's, what are these cars related to? And if you know something about cars, you start thinking about, aha, this is an ad about Ford. So that's what I mean about stuff being um, strategic and Jake's dealing with an issue. Ford are trying to convince us all that they might be going to close down their manufacturing in Australia, but they're still going to be here. We're still going to sell cars, even though we might make them 